this is the Folksy Friend, and on this channel I talk about stories. In particular, folk beliefs, tales, and mythologies. Today we're talking about Greek myths, and in case you're wondering, that's Captain. This is the story of Io, to whom we owe our name for the Bosporus Strait, which is an important waterway through modern-day Turkey. Before we start, here's the trigger warning for this story. Io was a princess, the daughter of Anakus, a river god who became the first king of Argos. It's important to note that Anakus had helped Hera in a land dispute with Poseidon, and in doing so had earned her favor. He was likely the first person who began worshipping Hera in Argos, and his daughter, Io, was likely, if not the first, one of the first priestesses to Hera. So Io has connections to Hera, and that is important to remember for later. One day, Zeus saw Io, and in a tale old as time, he decides to have an affair. It is likely that Io rejected his advances, especially because she was a priestess to Hera, and Hera is the goddess of marriage, ironically married to the most adulterous man in Greek mythology. That's right, Captain, he is. But despite the fact that she probably did resist, he didn't care. He never does, and Zeus got his way. Apologies. He got needy. So it does not take long for Hera to find out about this, and in a truly genius move, Zeus decides that the only way to protect Io from his wife is to turn her into a white cow. Hera, however, is not in fact stupid. So she sees this white cow miraculously standing where Io had been standing, and asks Zeus to give her this cow as a gift. Zeus couldn't deny her request without admitting what he had done, and he decided that he would rather have Io remain a cow for the rest of her life than face the anger of his own wife over something he did. So he gives Io to Hera. Hera took the cow and had her henchman, Argus, watch her. It's likely Hera thought that if she just kept a guard over Io, eventually Zeus would turn up to free her, and then she would catch her husband in the act. But Zeus does not go after Io himself. He sends Hermes to deal with Argus. Hermes arrives and begins to play his flute, which lures Argus into sleep. And once he's asleep, Hermes kills him. Enraged, Hera sends a gadfly to torment Io. This fly constantly follows and stings her on the butt, so she cannot have a moment's peace. Hera then revived Argus by turning him into a peacock. Each of his eyes became a feather, and he became her symbol. Poor Io, on the other hand, went crazy. She ran through Asia, then back around through Europe, swimming through a strait in Turkey which became known as the Bosporus, meaning Oxford, or Passage of the Cow. She ran all the way into Egypt, and then finally collapsed. Once she stopped running, Zeus finally did the correct thing and turned her back into a human. In human form, she gave birth to their son. Her son is linked to the founding of Memphis, and Io herself is linked to Egyptian history and mythology. But it's likely that these connections to Egyptian mythology came later in history. The scholars tried to neatly link together Egyptian and Greek mythologies. Interestingly, in some versions of her story, while Io is running, she comes across Prometheus, the titan who gave humanity fire, and he gives her some words of encouragement, telling her not to lose hope. One day she will be freed from her torment. And then, many generations later, it is one of Io's descendants, Heracles, who actually frees Prometheus. And that is the story of Io. I hope to see you again next week for some more stories. Thanks for watching. Zeus decides to turn her in. Thank you.